Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Today is Sunday. It is October 15th. I wasn't planning on doing a, a cooking video this late. It's 8.30, but this is going to be a special cooking video. We're going to get into a new form of cooking. Some of you guys may already know how to do this. Some of you may have this machine. Some of you might be curious of what this machine does. So, I'm going to go step by step, but first I need to wash it. So, I'm going to keep you guys, I'm going to kind of keep you guys in the lurch. And I did start putting my kitchen back together. I'm going to give you a quick little tour right now. I decided, um, okay, let me start by doing this. This will be an easier way to explain without having to move you. Okay, all of you guys know on this side that this, of course, is the toaster oven. Of course, this is where all the paint stuff is, and this is the corner of my refrigerator. So you guys know which corner that's in. What's behind me is the dining room. You guys are used to seeing the living room. That's actually the dining room, which is horribly messy. So I'm not really going to show you guys that, but that those are the china cabinets. So you have an area of an idea of where I am in the kitchen, of course, that faces the backyard, and of course, this is the island. But what I did, and unfortunately, I said the kitchen is still disorganized. I moved the bread box in, and I said it's not pretty. It does have some love, and you can see I'm going to bring you in where it's sort of wearing out here. That was my beloved grandmother, and I actually do use it. I do store my bread and, and stuff in it. So I have it facing the toaster oven for the reason that since the toaster oven is now across from it, it's gonna be easy to make for my husband to make sandwiches and to basically make toast in the morning if he wants a piece of toast in the morning or if he gets hungry in the middle of the night and wants a snack, he can just come up here, grab a piece of toast, shove it in the toaster oven and you've got toast. So, let me kind of back up and you guys are not on the cinematography right now you're on a different version and i noticed yesterday well yeah yesterday because you're seeing this hopefully you're seeing this monday i apologize to you guys that have that were watching part one of the italian um meal that i prepared on on saturday i meant to do the whole entire video as two parts and post them the same day for some reason, up to the gods in the heavens, iCloud is being a bear with my videos right now. And I think it might be the length and the fact that it's trying to upload six videos to the cloud. Usually that happens at night and in the morning I turn on my computer and they're all nicely waiting for me on my computer. And I can then edit it and push them. That's not what happened last night. For some reason, none of the videos transferred to iCloud. So I had to call Apple support, have them walk me through it. They said it's actually doing it, but because there were so many videos to transfer over, they take their time. And I am, I'm at the mercy, basically, of the cloud to download them to the MacBook Pro. Now, I can airdrop them and move them over, but then that takes even longer unless I do them one by one. So... I dig digress. Let me go clean what I was going to clean and I'll be right back and we'll start this, this relatively quick cooking video. And forgive me if I'm not talking right at a second. I'm just quickly getting this, this done as fast as possible so that I can show you guys what we're going to do with this. And this, unfortunately, was horribly dirty because of where it, it's been kept for the last few months. And I want to get this a little bit better. I don't know if I want to use 
and yeah, I, I don't know where I don't know where that has been. So I'm not gonna use that. Actually, I do know where this has been though, so this is gonna be a little bit quicker. One of these. Now, Bob, does this machine not have a, um, a yeast strap? You put the yeast in it. You just put it right in with the ingredients. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, so now you guys heard me ask my husband about yeast. So now you know what we're getting ready to do. I'm going to turn you guys around. This is a bread making machine. We're going to make a very simple... I think we're going to do this French, and I'm going to hold it up so you guys, hopefully this is not backwards for you guys, although it appears backwards to me. Hopefully it's not. I will write the in the great uh, the directions and the ingredients down below if you guys have a bread making machine. So this uses water at room temperature, and it, for a two pound, a large two pound loaf, it's one and a half cups. So I need to get my... Water to room temperature, and that's cold. And that's, that's warm. I would say that's probably room temperature. And unfortunately, sorry, I've got to <laughs> wash something else. I wasn't prepared because I wasn't actually planning on doing any cooking today. My husband actually made biscuits and gravy um, tonight for us, so a very quick meal. You might have wondered, well, why didn't I record it? Well, it's hard to record, especially since the kitchen is still not put together. So, usually if one of us is cooking, the other one's not in the kitchen right now because we don't want to get in anybody's way. So, I need to do just a couple of things. And I have yeast, so you might be asking, why the hell am I doing bread this late at night? Well, the honest answer is, is I have yeast that's about to expire. And I figured rather than throwing away a big thing of, of yeast, it would be beneficial just to use it. Okay, and I'm going to put... that's locked in position okay seems to be locked in position now the biggest problem is, is the power cord is, is short and I hate having to use a extension cord so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow these back a little bit and I'm going to bear with me Okay, there we go. Move this back a little bit. Y'all know the drill. You're going to go on the garbage can. But this time, since the machine is pretty big, I'm going to actually lift you up. I'm going to tip you just a little bit. You're going to see me over here. The island is actually more clearer than you think. And I'm only doing this because this cord is a little bit cockeyed for this. So we're going to do a French bread loaf and we need for a two pound, we need water at room temperature and that's one and a half cups. So anytime, if you don't have water that's been sitting up that has gotten at room temperature, put it on your hottest setting, let it get hot and then turn it down to where it, it feels tempted. To you and that is just about <coughs> half a cup that might be just a smidge over so I'm just gonna take a little of the water out okay so we need kosher salt which unfortunately you guys are coming with me actually you guys are gonna sit here for a second so Give me one second, I'll be right back. I've got to race into the living room and grab the kosher salt.
a big thing of kosher salt. And I will have to, excuse me again, I need unbleached all-purpose flour. I got the yeast. Okay, and I need measuring cups and I need a teaspoon. So I'm going to flip you guys, I'm actually going to move you guys down for a second. I'm going to flip you guys around. Maybe I should have recorded this in cinematography. One of you guys were nice and pointed out about the cinematography. And I'm going to play with the different settings on this phone. I'm still getting used to it. I've only had it for a couple of weeks now. Um, although you guys have seen quite a few videos on the new phone. Oh, and I need flowers. So, excuse me, uno momento. I will grab my flower and I'll be right back. And I should have more than enough flour in here, which means I need to grab the knife. Okay. I'm kind of liking the cinematography more than just the plain video, but for what we're doing, this is fine. So, for those of you that don't know what kosher salt is, anything that says kosher on it, it means kosher salt. And basically what kosher is, is um, it's a way for people of, of the Jewish faith to keep kosher. They keep kosher in their kitchens. If you're Jewish, I don't know what the greeting is because obviously I am not Jewish. I am Roman Catholic. Catholic. Shalom. That's it. Just came to me. So shalom to any of my Jewish friends that are watching. And I know you guys just got over, um, I think Yom Kippur and, and I don't know if Rosh Hashanah has come and passed or if that's about to come up. Um, I know some of the major Jewish holidays. I know it's Yom Kippur and then I think Yom Kippur and, and Rosh Hashanah, if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. I know those two holidays usually are around the same time. And then, of course, you've got Hanukkah that's coming up sometime either in November, at the end of November or the beginning or middle of December. I don't know when it falls this year, but I know that's going to be coming up. Anyway, I'll shut up and let's get back to this. So it says, put all the ingredients in the order listed into the bread pan fitted with the kneading paddle. Well, if you guys are new to bread machines, I'm going to bring you guys in. You can see the little paddle is, is this thing, and I'm kind of wiggling it. That's the pa paddle, and this is actually the bread pan. And all bread machines basically operate kind of the same. They might be a little bit different. Um, you just have to read your manufacturer's directions on, on how your, yours fits in and how they, they lock into place and stuff. This happens to be my husband's. Somewhere in this house, my grandmother sits gathering dust, but hers is very, very old and it is an enormous bread making machine. So it says, put all the ingredients in order listed. So the first ingredient is room temperature water and it's one and a half cups. So into the pan it goes. Next ingredient is kosher salt. Now I have kosher salt. I have um, coarse, which means that it's thick, but I think I'm going to use the um, natural kosher salt, which is a little bit thinner. And that wants one and a half teaspoons. So, I'm going to do this over a bowl. So, if I spill, okay, so it's one and a half teaspoons. So, that's one teaspoon, and we're going to do. Not quite, I'm not gonna, cause that was a little bit over. I'm not gonna quite. 
and then it's about a half. So that goes in. So we have the room temperature. Water was one and a half cups. The kosher salt was one and a half teaspoons. Now we're gonna put four cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. And of course, y'all know I love the King Arthur flour. For those of you that are first time viewers, welcome. Uh, hopefully you guys learn a few things. Bread machines have come a long way since I was introduced to them. And I was introduced to them way back in the late, late 80s. So that's our first cup of flour. Cup number two. And of course in the late 80s, I was never allowed near my grandmother's bread machine because it was um very expensive back then i think hers i think she paid well what she told my grandfather and what she actually paid for it i think there was about a hundred dollar dif difference but i think hers was like around 400 bucks and back then they were they were a new commodity because uh not every kitchen had them and and they were fairly new just like her KitchenAid mixer when she bought hers back in the 70s she only paid me $180 but in the 1970s that was a lot of money so hopefully that was cup number three and this is cup number four I'm hoping did you hear me say cup number two and cup number three by chance no. Okay. Well, we're going to go with that was four cups because I can't really measure it out because there is a... Uh... Not enough. Not enough leeway. I'm going to stop the video, actually. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. You didn't miss anything. I just had to go back and actually watch a little bit of the video to see how many cups of flour I put in, and it does now have four cups of flour in there. So now it wants yeast, it wants one and a half teaspoons of act, active dry instant or bread machine. Well, I have active dry yeast, so we're gonna use that. Now you want, this is where you wanna be careful, and I know in previous videos, I talked about the different yeasts. This, Time with bread machines, you very rarely want to use a fresh yeast. Um, usually, you want to use a good active dry yeast. And once you open active dry yeast, put it in the refrigerator. It, it'll keep for a couple of months in the refrigerator. But like I said, this is expiring this year, actually this month. So this will only last maybe another month or two, and then I'll have to get new ones. So it wants one and a half teaspoons, so. That's the half teaspoon. And I'm going to put the one, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of dry yeast. Okay, it says secure the bread pan into the Quasinart bread machine, which we did. Okay, we're going to shut the top. We're going to press the program button. Okay. It, to select the French program. Okay. Oh. Press the program to select the French. Well, French is two, okay? That's one and a half cups. That's one and a half pounds. So size, we're gonna go to two pound. Okay. Press start, stop to begin the bread making. Okay. So. Press the start, stop. Okay, so size. Oh, we need to do, hold on, we need to, hold on, we need to, okay, two for 
Okay? And that's all you have to do. So I programmed it. I hit, on, my, on mine, it's number two for the French bread. It's a two pound loaf that we're doing. Press the starts and it will actually go through the whole thing. It will actually knead, proof, raise and bake all in, in this one container. So this is programmed for four hours and 20 minutes, which eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, it'll take it me to about 1.20 a.m. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm actually going to I wish, I wish this had a, uh, um, wish this had a pause feature or you could do it later, but apparently it doesn't, so. When cycle is complete, remove the bread from the machine, transfer to a wire rack to pull completely before slicing. Oh, to prepare using the ultra fast, oh, one, and one and a half pounds only, so I can't do that. I have to let it go the full four hours and 19 minutes. So anyway, that's using the bread machine. Unfortunately, by the time it's done, it's going to be way too late. My husband will not be up that late, and hopefully neither will I. But I may, may be up long enough to take it out and let it um, cool. So that's just the basic bread making machine. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on this side of the sink. That's going to be a first because there's nothing other than my knives over there. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, rinse my my kitchen utensil and dry that. And let me know down in the comments below if you guys own bread making machines or if it's something you've thought about getting and have been hesitant to do. Or if it's something, or if it's if, if it's a machine you already own and you make your own breads. Um, the reason I decided to make a bread is my favorite Bohemian Bakery, which has been around for I think 118 years, or maybe 103. I think it opened in 1918. Is actually closing its store in December. And if you've ever been to Illinois, and you know uh, the Berwyn Cicero. Cicero area. It's called Beth Susky's Bakery. It's on Cermak Road, which is 22nd Street. Um, my family has actually been going there since it opened, starting with my great-grandmother. She went there, then my grandmother went there, then my mother went there, and then, of course, I went there. So it's, it's uh, four generations of my family have gone to that bakery. And I have a lot of fond memories, but they make the best, most amazing rye bread. And I'm going to find a bread making machine recipe that will bake um, the rye bread. And the reason the bread making machine makes it so easy, you don't have to do the dough hooks and you don't have to let it rise and knead it and then let it rise again and then put it in a pan and then bake it. Let your bread making machine do that. Now I still will do have to do that with Oska because unfortunately my grandmother's recipe will not allow me to bake it in a bread making machine. And my grandmother, God rest her soul, would probably kill me if I did try to do it that way. She'd be like, this isn't the way that it's made. You know better, you do it by hand. And that's the one, one in bread that I do do by hand. So we're gonna try this out and see it. This one's a little bit noisy, so hopefully um, you guys have a little bit quieter of a machine, but. And I can already see the little, yeah, I can, I can see the little, little things that are working, so I know my yeast is working. So I'm gonna finish drying up the dishes and then I'm going to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like I said, I'm going to ease into the cooking videos. This may not post until, well, I'm going to hopefully post this on, on Monday. If you don't see it Monday, then it is Tuesday. I've done this Sunday night very late. It's 
now 9.03 p.m. And yeah, I know it's a little bit late to be baking bread. But then again, if you know me in person, you know I don't do anything when I'm like I'm supposed to. So I'm doing it a little bit late. Much to the chagrin, probably my husband. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave me a comment down below. I will see you on the next Cooking with Joel video. Again, there's going to be no videos starting Tuesday through the end of the week, at least through Friday. I'm taking the rest of the week. Well, technically, it's not the rest of the week yet because Monday starts the week. But I am going to take the whole entire week off. So I will not be posting any type of videos or I won't be filming any. You might see them post, but they're not actually going to be videos that I did record during the week. So I'll see you on the next Cooking with Joel video. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the, on the next video. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Today is Monday. It is the 16th of October. I'm going to wrap up the bread making uh, <laughs> bread making video. I just woke up not even 10 minutes ago. I've only been up a short time. So I'm going to bring you guys over. And this is the French loaf of bread that was made last night. Don't mind the, the black mark on the bottom. I read something, tried something, it didn't work. I quickly pulled it out because I didn't realize that the bread machine actually has a warming cycle. So it it there was one website that said you could take the bread out of the bread pan and just drop it into the the um bread machine and close and put about an inch of space and it'll just naturally cool down. So what I did last night at about 1.45 is I took it out, I put it on this cookie sheet, and I just wrapped it with a clean um, cotton towel, towel overnight. And it is not moist. It is perfectly done. And now to store... For those of you wondering how to store fresh bread. Now, we're not talking about bread that you would get in a, um, that you would get in a grocery store because those have a lot of chemicals in it. We're talking natural French, fresh bread that has no preservatives. Well, you want to slice it, wrap it really tight in saran wrap or aluminum foil. You can wrap it in a clean 100% cotton towel and put it in the bread box. It'll survive for a couple of days in the bread box, but it will not survive for a long time in the bread box because it has no preservatives. So I'm going to go slice this up, have a piece of bread for breakfast, and I'm going to call it a day. Again, just a reminder, I'm taking the rest of the week off. Um, I do have a few videos that I will be posting today and tomorrow. I will see you on the next Cooking with Joel video. <clears throat>